Today's show is about inversions, not the atmospheric type, which is a phenomenon of the weather, but inversions of musical intervals, and they occur in two basic forms, too, melodic and harmonic. Do, mi. Mi, do. Now that we know about transpositions and key signatures, we can look closer at the relationships between individual tones in different keys. By the way, we are talking about both the stationary letter names of the notes as well as their movable solfege counterparts. Take, for example, the two notes F and C. In the key of F major, F and C are Do and Sol, respectively, with F Do as the lower note. The interval from F up to C, Do up to Sol, is a perfect fifth. Do, Sol. With C Sol on the bottom, however, the distance from F Do down to C Sol is a perfect fourth. Do, Sol. Here is the C major scale, transposed down an octave into the bass staff. Though the note C is still the Do of this key, the octave transposition reveals another set of intervals below the original keynote of middle C. These new intervals below the tonic are the inversions of the intervals from the octave above. Inverted, the perfect prime or unison, becomes a perfect octave below. The major second above becomes a minor seventh below. The major third, a minor sixth. The perfect fourth, a perfect fifth. The perfect fifth, a perfect fourth. The major sixth, a minor third. The major seventh, a minor second below. And the perfect octave, a perfect prime or unison. Principle of inversion. When inverted, perfect consonances remain perfect and major intervals become minor. Listen to the upper intervals again. Now their inversions below. Practice playing and naming each of these intervals on your keyboard. Regardless of key signature or accidentals, minor intervals always become major when inverted. Incidentally, did you notice that combining the number name of an interval with its inversion at the octave always adds up to 9? Furthermore, diminished intervals become augmented. and augmented intervals become diminished. Here are all the upper intervals from C, written out, labeled, and rapidly played. Did you follow? Now there are inversions written, labeled, and played at the octave below. (laughs) 
write out all the intervals as measured from the tones F and G, both above and also their inversions at the lower octave, and label them as in the previous two slides. Check your work by verifying that the sum of each pair of upper and lower inversions, regardless of accidentals, always adds up to 9. By the way, inversions can be constructed not only at the octave, but also at the tenth and at the twelfth, like this. Later on, in the study of counterpoint, we'll be dealing with inversions at the tenth and at the twelfth as well. Subscribe, share, practice writing, listen. Questions may be posted in a comment. By the way, did you notice those last inversions add up to 11 and 13? Thank you for watching.